in this holiday season, there's a question on the table. Should I or should I not? Should I or should I not forgive? And the answer is, by all means, forgive. Because you're most like your daddy when you forgive. you most like God when you forgive. Let's go back to Second Samuel and unpack some more. But pray for us. Let us pray. Father, I want to thank you. Thank you for these things are left on record so that we can see how to walk with you, so we can see how to love you, how to be one with you. So, Father, we pray, O oh God, that as we get into this lesson today, let us see and let us be true children of God by the ability to be able to forgive everybody of everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Quick review. We used as our foundational passage, and that was Matthew 18 where Jesus told a parable about a unmerciful slave that had been forgiven, <clears throat> but now he couldn't see his way to forgive anybody else. But now I want to continue in Second Samuel. David is supposed to be king, but he's running with his head covered because his son, Absalom, wants to kill him. I guess because he wasn't a good father. I guess because he didn't do nothing to Amnon that raped his David's daughter, but raped Absalom's sister. Absalom was... Uh, upset because when it came to parenting David was not the best parent so here he is collecting people coming to Jerusalem to kill David his own father and David rush up everybody to get him out of the city because he knew the heart of Absalom. So now we come to another very important person in David's life that chose not to forgive. Long as you're breathing, you can always choose to forgive. His name is Ahithophel. Ahithophel was a part of the conspiracy with Absalom. Absalom. If you look at verse 15 of chapter 16, then Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, entered Jerusalem and Ahithophel with him. Now, the reason that name is sticking out there like that is because if there was ever a betrayal of a friend, Ahithophel betrayed David. He was another Judas before Judas showed up. He betrayed David. And, and he's so angry. You see, the thing about unforgiveness, it don't leave you where it finds you. It'll take you further and further away from the mark. Not only are you angry, 
but now you're bitter. Now you have hatred and cruelty in your heart. It didn't start there. And if it's not dealt with, it's not going to end there. But here is Absalom. I mean, uh, I, I hear for fail. Angry as he could be. Let's see how angry he is. I mean, he literally hates David. But this is how angry he was. Uh, he was so angry that he counseled. By the way, he was David's counsel. And he was a good counselor. I mean, one of the best. And when he counseled, he spoke as if it was the voice of God. He was good. And maybe that's why David had him as his counselor. But here, uh, David is on his way out of the city. And Ahithophel counsels Absalom and say, Absalom, what you need to do is go in and sleep with David's concubines. Now that is something you just don't do. And plus, is your father too? Go in and violate David's concubines. It is such an offense that when Solomon became king, one of his siblings wanted the young lady that was keeping David warm and during his old age he couldn't stay warm you could put you couldn't put enough cover on him to keep him warm so this virgin was put in the bed with David and and she was a virgin before she got in the bed and when she got out she was still a virgin because David had learned his lesson he didn't touch her she got the job done, done, keeping the king warm in his old age. Well, uh, one of David's brothers wanted to marry her after David had died. But that wasn't a problem. He wanted to be looked at as next to David because if you got David's stuff, then you must be next to David. And then Solomon had to kill him because he told him, man, look, as long as you show yourself righteous, won't nothing happen to you. But he couldn't do it. He couldn't show himself righteous. Well, anyway, here's Ahithophel. Ahithophel counsels uh, Absalom to go in to his daughter's, to his um, father's concubine. And he said, then the people will know that you're a king. They'll know that. But that ain't all Ahithophel did. Ahithophel was so angry with David that when it was time to go and chase David, um, he asked Absalom, let me go. Let me go and I'll bring him back to you as if to say, if you let me go, I will bring his head back to you on a platter. In fact, he asked for 12,000 valiant men to go and chase David, to find him, and then to kill him. 
Hmm. And yet, uh, Shusha, another counselor that David had prayed for, he says, Shusha, don't come with me. Stay in the city and go and pretend that you are Absalom's counselor and uh, uh, and usurp the counsel of Ahithophel. Cancel out his counsel. And he did that. He went in and he counseled Absalom and the counsel of Absalom was better than Ahithophel. Ahithophel. In chapter 16 and verse 15 is when Ahithophel joined David's, I mean joined Absalom's uh, like rebellion. And in uh, 17, 23, for unforgiveness will get you killed. Unforgiveness. So 17 and verse 23, this is what he says. He says, uh, then... Um, Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed and Ahithophel went out and he died because he went and hung himself mm -hmm. he went and got his house in order, but then he hung himself. Then what happened? A man with that kind of uh, ability end up hanging himself. Here it is. Verse 23 says, Now when Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his donkey and arose and went to his house, to his city, set his house in order, and strangled himself. Thus he died and was buried in the grave of his father's. That's what unforgiveness will do. It will get you killed. But let's talk about it just for a second. Why was he so angry? Why was he so bent on killing David? It goes all the way back to years early when David went to bed with Bathsheba. Bathsheba was a Hephaphel's niece. And here's David, has violated her, violated their family name, and just messed up everything. And here's a Hephaphel still in service to David, still counseling David, but yet. He was filled with bitterness and anger. See, you can act like you're serving people, act like it ain't nothing wrong, but in your heart, you can't stand them. That's what unforgiveness will do. It will make you a bona fide hypocrite. Know the truth, but not doing it. Beloved, let's don't be like a hypocrite. Don't be a hypocrite. Forgive every chance you get because God forgave you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you for forgiveness. I thank you for mercy. I thank you that you keep on forgiving us. And now, Father, offense is going to come. 
and woe to woe who they come through. But we on the other end, let us forgive in spite of. So, Father, we thank you. We ask you things in Jesus' name. Amen.